forget Ron Burgundy. Can Will Ferrell make a comeback? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Anchorman 2. Aren't you the guy who lost his job to his wife? Wow, right on the lens. I'm sorry, sweetie, you're the best. Quick kiss. Hmm? Oh! Undaunted by the challenges they faced, they would not rest until they were number one again. Yay! You're not black or Asian. I'm gay. Do you sleep in a coffin? No, that's vampires. Are you allowed to be out in the sun? Those are also vampires. Are you a vampire? The sad fact is that every comedian eventually wears out their welcome. Robin Williams, Jim Carrey, Adam Sandler, their initially hilarious antics turn nails on a chalkboard. Is it time for Will Ferrell to get the hook as well, or does he have at least one more round left? After all, he'd bucked another Hollywood trend by actually building a strong movie career post-SNL. Yes, it's a short list. Sandler's on it, Mike Myers with an asterisk, and Farrell had hit the ground running when he left the NBC sketch show in 2002 with 2003's Old School. And after another hit, Elf, Farrell had a slew of hits working with writer-producer Adam McKay, who'd left SNL the year before. Anchorman, Talladega Nights, Blades of Glory, Step Brothers, and the other guys. That's a six-year run. Sure, he had some flops sprinkled in there, largely when he tried to act, but he never went more than a year without a hit until 2011 and 2012. Everything Must Go, Casa de Mi Padre, and the campaign all fell flat, which might be why Farrell, who used to make up to four movies a year, only has one this year. And it almost didn't happen. Paramount, who had bought the rights to the original film from DreamWorks back in 2006 as part of a bulk deal, initially passed on Anchorman 2 as they felt it would be unable to turn a profit. But Farrell and McKay continued to press Paramount for a green light, even discussing the situation openly with the press, and eventually won out. The budget that was settled on is said to be $50 million, twice the budget of the first flick, which only grossed about $90 million worldwide. However, the fan base for Ron Burgundy has clearly grown over time, just as it did for Austin Powers, and the sequel is expected to debut with $50 million, twice the opening of the first film. Paramount hopes to keep hearing the word twice, yet just to make sure they're offering a super ticket for the film, just as they did with World War Z. With a single showing two days early, many of the $33 a pop screenings sold out. And you can still buy a variation of the super ticket on Fandango, getting the extras when you see the movie with everyone else for $31. Hmm, no matter how good Anchorman 2 might be, is that classy? I laughed really hard, a lot. And what else do we want from a comedy, right? I'm not quite sure what else to say about Anchorman 2 because I don't want to ruin it for you. Because part of the fun of this film is going in blind and just being blown away by how it unfolds. I mean, it is just the absurdity and the cleverness, though, makes a perfect storm of funny. Uh, from amazing cameos uh, to actually, I'd say, surprising depth for the film. I think something a lot of people are going to be talking about is how Anchorman 2 is actually about something, how it actually has a message. But I don't even want to give that away because the revelation that they're doing that is also so much fun to, to figure out while you're watching it and be like, what? Are they, are they really going to go there? That's brilliant. Uh, this is definitely easily one of Will Ferrell's best comedies, right up there with Talladega Nights. And while This is the End is still my favorite comedy of 2013, this is up there. Uh, now, of course, it is a Will Ferrell comedy, and some of the jokes don't land. But conservatively, because I don't want to get anyone's hopes up too high, I would say 60% of the jokes land, and they land hard. So I'm happy to say that Ron Burgundy's fan base has evolved, and with it, so has uh, the material. I loved this movie. I thought it was really great. I think it's a must-see. I think there's a, they, a Paramount has a big hit on their hands. And I would compare it to, uh, to Austin Powers, and then I think it's going to get much bigger as a franchise with the second film, even though the first one wasn't huge. But where it differs from Austin Powers, at least in my opinion, is that I thought The Spy Who Shagged Me was uh, not as good as the first Austin Powers, Man of, International Man of Mystery. Whereas I think this is a much better film than the first Anchorman. I loved it. Uh, discuss below. Uh, spoilers if you want, but be careful. Be sure to write spoiler first because, as I said, it's so crucial to go into this movie uh, not knowing anything or knowing as little as possible. Have fun. It's a great holiday treat. Uh, and thank you for watching my review. And you can check out some more episodes right now.